Good morning. Um, Lord felt to teach on Psalms 96, I mean 91 verse 6 today. I know I just did 91 verse 5 yesterday. And um, when I woke up very early this morning, um, after my time of prayer and, and then some um, some study, just felt like I should go ahead and, and go into um, this um, this study. If you give me a moment, I am going to try and um, get this where I'm um, sending this forth to um, the other pages also. So just give me a moment, uh, give me a chance to, if anybody is um, available that they want to get online and watch it live, that'd be great. And um, so um, it is um, what it is. Hopefully I won't be getting any more um, um, interruptions like I did yesterday. I really apologize for that. Um, but you know, sometimes those group messages or texts or, or something else. So saying all that to say this is that um, I am right now putting him on um, of our other Facebook pages. Um, TRC, uh, the Rock Church Clute Campus, and I have people messaging me, so I had to wait for them to leave so I could hit the post. As soon as I went, just said that, went to do it. Somebody else just put that they liked what was said. Okay, see, so I got that one in just quick enough. Uh, so um, I appreciate your patience. I pray that um, all is well today. And um, uh, that um, everything's going well. Um, again, um, I'm going to get started on that here really soon. And um, again, I appreciate your patience in all this. And I'm going to try to keep this close to me so I can see if anybody has any comments um, during this time. So, um, let me just do this one thing on. Let some people text me, ask me when I'm going on, and I'll put it on right now. <laughs> and uh, there we go. Because I text the office staff and the ministers and ministry so that they'll know if I'm not going to be very available. But, um, um, See, Pastor Evans has come on, so he's one of the ones I text. Um, and now I'm going to get a bunch of response saying that um, they know, see that I'm on. Sister Sheila, it's good to see you on. Um, thank you for joining, uh, Pastor Evans. Again, I know this is not a regulated time. Um, you might start seeing that more out of me. I, I don't know, I assume. Um, but um, I will try to. Um, do what the Lord wants me to do and I felt this morning to go ahead and do Psalms 91 and 6 um, I had several comments and ended a few hundred people viewed yesterday's and that I know of and, and some of the comments and some of the messages I got said it was very timely and I was talking about the, the four um, categories and then um, did the first two yesterday and I'm going to do three and four today because that's in Psalms 5 and then it's for the first two categories and Psalms 6 out of the next two categories and I'll cover what the categories were again here in just a moment but I just wanted to um, make sure that you know what's happening but again um, uh, our prayers and our prayer requests and I noticed also on TRC family YouTube sisters uh, uh, Sandra already put Psalms 91 and 5. So if you have not um, enrolled or um, become a member or uh, members, not to, uh, the right word, I, I, I 
forget what the terminology is, um, that you hit the button and um, on TRC family, subscribe. That's the button. That's the word to subscribe. Subscribe, please do. And, um, and then please, if you would, um, share this page, uh, share this teaching on your page, if you would. It does help and it does um, reach out. Some of you say that you're a little shy about uh, talking to people. One of the greatest ways to, to witness then on Facebook is to um, just um, reshare, uh, share um, the teachings my wife and I are doing, or teachings of my wife or preaching, uh, Brother Barber, uh, Pastor Evans, or Sister Diane, or Sister Ruth, or any others that we are sharing. And um, so I appreciate that. And um, I thank you for your love and your kindness um, to the Rock Church family. This is Pastor Appreciation Month. And I want to, again, express my appreciation to Pastor Evans and Sister Evans for the they love for they have for us and the, the children of God of the Rock Church. And I want to say thank you for that. And God bless you. Um, I notice um, I'm wearing my big red shirt today. Of course, it's probably reading uh, backwards to you. I, I don't know how that works anymore. But um, I'm going in remembrance of our military guys on Fridays. Usually, you're supposed to wear something red um, to remember all of them that are in deployed. Uh, but let me read, go ahead and read Psalms 1, and I'm going to read Psalms 1 6 completely. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to start with Psalms 1, 6a. And um, so we're going to look at it that way. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Remember, I'm going to read five again that I, um, we went over yesterday. And if you have not been a part of the other lessons, please go back and look on the page um, if you're um, on the Facebook page, you can um, go back and also on, on our YouTube channel, TRC Family. You can also go back and, and see the, the previous teachings. But I'm going to go ahead and read um, because I'm talking about the four characteristics, ca categories, I'm sorry, the four categories. And we did two of them yesterday. And I will we'll go over that here in just a little bit. But thou shalt not be afraid for the ten terror by night. Now, this is verse 5. We went over yesterday. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Today, we're going to be teaching on nor for the pestilence, verse 6, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waste, wasteth at noonday. And um, um, Psalms, I'm going to go with 6a. I'm going to go ahead and talk about that just for a minute. For a minute. The third category I was talking about, and I was talking about yesterday, the first two, but this is the third category of evil uh, God names is pestilence. Um, this is the only evil he names twice. Since God doesn't waste words, he uh, must have a specific reasons for repeating this promise. Um, have you ever noticed that when a person says something more than once, it's usually because um, he wants to emphasize that point. God knew the pestilence. Um, he, um, pestilence and the fear that would be running rampant in these days. And the world is almost overrun with, with uh, fatal epidemics, um, hitting people by the thousands. So God catches our um, attention by repeating this promise. And I want to make sure that is covered because what type of pestilence are we hitting today? What type of um, epic um, colostral of, of world events? Uh, of course, we've got the Corona um, 19, and there's, there's even more than that that's been happening throughout our time. It's as though God is saying, I said in verse 3, if you remember verse 3, it says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the nuisance pestilence. But he, didn't, he did, but did you really hear what he had to say? Because he said it again in verse 3, You are delivered from the deadly pestilence. And he wants you to hear him. So he just, to be sure, 
I'm going to, he's going to say it again in verse 6. You do not have to be afraid of deadly pestilence. Somebody needs to hear that. You do not have to be afraid of deadly pre, uh, pestilence. This is not contrary to what the world teaches. Uh, uh, this is not so uh, much what the world teaches us that we have to re we have to renew our mind because the world wants to put the fear of this pestilence and everything. If we don't wear our mask, if we don't do this now, again, I'm not against masks. I wear my mask when I need to, but there, the process of that is that the mask is not going to save your life. Jesus Christ is the only one who's going to save your life, period. But the thing is that the world wants to bombard us with fear and anxiety. And the Lord is trying to help us. So we got to have to renew. We have to renew our thinking. We have to new, renew our thoughts. And the, what's the best way of renewing it is to get into the Word of God every day. And, it, and to me, the best time to do that is before your day even starts with your prayer life. Only then we're going to understand that we don't have to be afraid of sickness and disease, the uh, 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 epidemic to the world today. When I, when I first started studying uh, this Psalms, I remember I, I don't know if I if I didn't I didn't know if I had the faith to believe these promises. This thought stretched my faith in my mind until I thought it would snap like a rubber band. But because I do believe that the word of God, and it wasn't that I did not believe the word of God, but the world changed my mind. Man, if you're so involved in the news or CNN or Fox or, or whatever, and you're so wrapped up about hearing how bad Biden is and how bad... Um, Trump is and whatever side they're on. And I mean, you, you think that they respond by the devil, um, either one of them by each party was with how they talk about each other, but they, they, they want to warp our brain to think the way they want us to think. And usually that's out of fear. They want us to think out of fear and out of anxiety. So we have to retrain our mind. And how do we do that by but trusting in the Lord and his um, words and his word of God and bring ourselves to in a submission and obedience to him. Um, but when God has to remind me, faith, faith is not a feeling. Faith is simply choosing to believe what he says in his word. The more I choose to believe God's word, the more I knew that I could that I could trust and rely on him completely. Our inheritance is not limited what is handed down to us generically. Our inheritance can be what Jesus provided provides provided for us if we believe the word and put it to work. Christ redeemed us from the cause of the law having become a curse um, for us. The re God, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become curse for us, Galatians 3.13. So the third, again, is, um, is what we have talked about is pestilence. And again, the Lord spoke twice, verse 3 and, and right now, that we don't have to be afraid. Um, we need to hear that and take, uh, uh, take that within our hearts and believe it. Because he doesn't waste his words, and especially if he ends up saying it twice and fervently. Don't have to be afraid. We trust in him. Psalms 91, 6 and B. In Mark 4, 39, Jesus rebuked the storm and it became perfectly calm. 
There is no place in the world you can go and be safe from every destruction, every natural disaster. If you're running for a hurricane, most likely you're at Tornado Alley. If you're running from um, earthquakes, you're most likely around earth, um, uh, um, volcanoes. Uh, if, if you're running from volcanoes and you go someplace else, most likely you're running to a place that has flooding. Most of the natural disasters are everywhere in the world today. So you cannot run from a natural disaster. We can never anticipate what might come when we least expect it. Here in South Texas, where we're at, um, the Rock Church understands this. And you that are in the South Texas area of our area, you understand this. But um, we've had the 500-year flood. Um, the year before that, we had the 300-year flood. And then you go on and go on almost every year for the uh, uh, for a period of time for four years that we had major flooding in this area. Then about a few years before that, we had about ten years of drought, and then we had to, to worry about um, fires uh, being set and, and not not set by people but by the sun with dry grass. But no matter where you are in the world. God says to run to his shelter where you will not be afraid of the destruction. It will not approach you. God wants us to take it seriously. He wants us to take it seriously, his promises, that we do not have to fear the, uh, destruction. He will, not, uh, he will not approach us. It will not, destruction will not approach us. Listen to me. Destruction will not approach us. So God wants us to take this seriously. Did you know that every evil known to man will fall into one or one of these four categories? We have named this in this chapter. Terror, arrows, pestilence, and destruction. And the amazing thing is that God has offered us deliverance from all of them, or from them all. Not just one of them, not just if this or that, but he um, delivered us from all of them. I do want to put, uh, I don't know if it's considered a disclaimer or not, but I want to put something in here. You say all oh, a disclaimer, so you don't you don't really believe the this no 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 it's not a disclaimer that on this on the on believing the word of God it's on people that claim these promises but they're not living by his commandments we have to live by his commandments his commandments are not hard they're only hard if we allow our flesh to overcome he has given us uh, the power to overcome sin. When we go before him and repent of our sins, and we ask him to forgive, our sin, forgive us of our sins, and we're truly honest about it, and we're wanting to turn from our sins and do something the right way, he absolutely forgives us completely, unquivocally, and he doesn't remember, and it's done. And when we are buried in the name of Jesus Christ by the remission of our sins, we are buried in his name. As the Bible says, we're buried in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in baptism. And the blood of Jesus is applied upon us. And we come out of the water even before if we receive the Holy Ghost before we're baptized. The Bible says the Holy Ghost is the power of, that's going to give us to be able to help us to overcome sin. So I receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. I spoke about this already. What is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is not speaking in tongues. The Holy Ghost is God coming in our hearts, in our lives. And by that happening, we know that they receive the Holy Ghost by the evidence of them speaking in tongues. Tongues is not the Holy Ghost. It's the evidence that you have received the Holy Ghost. That's Bible. And so when you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive a power 
that, um, that you're able to overcome sin. And with that type of promises and all the things that we have, and we trust and we believe in him, those promises that he has for us, them all that we can embrace. God has said in his word, we will not be afraid of terror, arrows, pestilence, or destruction. These things will not approach us if we will dwell in his shelter and abide in his shadow. I just kind of covered that in more of the biblical terms, his shelter and his shadow. We're keeping his commandments. We're walking after him. We're walking in the image of him. The Psalms, this Psalms is not filled with expectations, excuses to fail or to fulfill his promise. Rather, it is a bold statement of what he wants to do for you and I. What then? If some did not believe, their unbelief would not nullify. Listen to me. It is because some that do not believe, you might say, well, I don't believe this. I don't believe the word of God. I don't believe in what you're telling me. Even if you're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, there's some people who really have a hard time believing um, this is for them. Well, it is. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist, whatever. It does, you're, you that are unbelieving and you're notified, uh, you, you're, notif you're not notifying the faithfulness of God. God is still faithful. It doesn't matter if everybody in this world will nullify the, the truth of his word. He's still faithful. May it never be, or rather, let God be found true, though every man be found a liar, as it is written, that thou might prevail when thou art judged. In Romans 3, 3 through 4. Um, I don't have the capability to, to do the scriptures while I'm teaching, unless she's teaching with me. But um, hopefully that when you go and you listen to this, and if you need to go back through it, um, the scriptures that I have given you, if you'll take those and then you cross-reference and, and, and use those, you'll see that I'm not just trying to um, wave a magic wand. It, this is biblical. God is telling us, even though there may be some who don't believe, listen to me, that their unbelief will never nullify his promise to, to the ones who do believe. Paul in Romans quoting from the Old Testament gives us the important reminder that what we as individuals choose to believe and confess will cause us to prevail during times of judgment. Without the promise of the protection throughout the word of God, and especially without Psalms 91, convenient listing all the forms of protection made available um, in one Psalms, we might feel rather presumptuous if it was on our own. We ask God to protect us from all these things listed, these la um, last four verses, and, 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 you, and you see all the things that we asked, but then we might ask all that, but then he tells us without us asking, if you will believe and if you'll live according um, to the word of God, and if you will work, if you'll run in, uh, into his shelter and bide in his shadow, we do not have to fear he's going to protect us. In fact, we probably would not have the nerve to ask him for all this coverage. But he offered this protection to us before we even had the chance to ask. Think about that. He took care of that because he knew that was such a, a, an overwhelming fear or overwhelming uh, thoughts that's going to come to our minds, but he went ahead and took care of each and every one of those fears. And if we will abide, and if we'll run under his shelter and abide uh, with his shadow, we will uh, be a part of the protection. He will protect us. He will keep us, and he will preserve us. 
not for us to do our own will or do our own thing, but for us to be able to accomplish his kingdom minded, kingdom, be kingdom minded every day for his glory, for his kingdom. The world is, uh, is the old saying is the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Well, there's a reason why God put the church up against the gates of hell. It's not for us to keep the, the gates shut. It's for us to, to keep as many as possible not go to hell. And for us to be able to uh, stand strong for people that might not have the strength or the understanding that we might have at this time. Remember, there was a time in our lives that we were filled with fear and anxiety. And we might have been, been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And especially at the beginning of our lives, of spiritual lives, there's so much anxiety. The enemy would tell us this is all a front. This is all hogwash. This is not, this is about emotion. That's it. Um, well, I've been in it long enough. It's more than about emotion. It's uh, a, a real life thing. This is the only book here. This is the only um thing that I have been a part of over the years that has actually come true. I have read about the past, about the, the things of God and how he built up to the place where he became the sacrificial lamb. He showed me about the church um, being birthed in that book of Acts and how the church needs um, to accomplish um, his, his reasoning and what to prepare for us to make heaven our home. He showed this in this book, and he given us letters after the book of Acts, after the church is born, to help us to become, grow stronger in him and look away from the things of our past and, and be able to go forth and set forth the mark that is before us. Then at the very end, he tells us about the end time. He tells us about when things are going to become not, and then how soon the Lord will come. We might not know the day or the hour or the time, but he said the church will have an understanding when his time is coming soon. And I see it. I hear the bridegroom. I hear I hear the one before the bridegroom saying, the bridegroom cometh, kind of like we um, um, talked about Wednesday. The bridegroom cometh, and the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins had time to get ready for the coming of the bridegroom. They both woke up. What are you and what am I going to do? Are we going to wake up and be ready for the bridegroom? Are we going to trim our lamps? Are we going to get more oil? Or are we going to make sure our lamps are full of oil? It's going to be up to us, but the end time tells us that there's going to be still the five foolish and the five wise. I want to be a part of the five wise as he comes back for us. God is coming soon. I'm going to read these scriptures again in um, um, 91 and 6 here in just a moment. I am going to let you know. I don't know if it'll be next week. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow. It might be later on today if God leads me to. But to my next set of scriptures, I'm actually going to add um, three scriptures, 7, 8, and 9, um, in my lesson for the next time. Psalms 91, 7 through 9 will be the next um, group of scriptures. Uh, we have 16 verses, but that'll be the next um, set of scripture because they tie in so much together. I don't want to separate them. Um, I want to keep them together and we're going to interchange with them. But um, I hope and I pray that this has helped you today. I pray that yesterday and today with the, the four categories gives you more of an understanding and be able to help you to be able to pray today with confidence that you don't have to so much always be praying about your own little circumstances, but you cast your cares on him and you, and you let it go because you, you're you running to his shelter. You're abiding in the, un, under his shadow and, and you don't have to worry about all these circumstances are coming your way, but you just cast them to him. And then you're able to pray the kingdom prayers that God wants you to pray. You're able to be able to set yourself in the place that God is able to use this, use you during this time of your life. And the joy of God could be used through you. Amen? Don't know about you, but I, I, I'm reaching for people also, and I, I'm help, trying to help the church people here. 
the, the children of God, but I'm also reaching for the people that don't have this type of hope. This hope is good for you also. The Bible talks about he's going to call and he will choose. He calls and he's calling you today. Will you allow him to choose you? Will you accept his calling today? Today, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your own home. You might say, I really don't understand what you're saying. Start reading the book of Acts. That is the birthing of the church. Start reading the book of Acts. But when you're driving down the road, or you might be in your home and in your prayer time, and you start having stammering lips, don't be afraid of that. Just let it, let it go. If you start speaking in another language, that is the Holy Ghost. That's the evidence of the Holy Ghost that comes into your heart and into your life. So God has shown you that you have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you, that's happened to you and you're not uh, used to it or you've not been a part of it, I don't care where you're at and you want to know more understanding about it, message me. Um, put it on comments or, or send a message to the Rock Church or send a message to me uh, personally. And if it goes to the Rock Church, they'll make sure I get it. And, and through that process, we'll give you more of an understanding of what just happened to you. And if you desire to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if, if there's no one in that area that understands the scriptures that way to baptize you, um, I'll drive. Uh, my wife and I will drive to where you're at or we'll fly. Whatever it would take so that you could be born again in water and in spirit. It's biblical. You've got to be born in the water and in spirit. And if you don't have a church family, the Rock Church, Pastor Evans and Sister Evans and the church staff there and the ministers there and myself as the bishop of the Rock Church, we want to extend our hand of welcome to be a part of our congregation. And then you say, well, I'm in California. I don't really, you might not have a church that, that you feel comfortable or might not be teaching or preaching what we're talking about now. Um, we could become your church. We could become your pastors. And again, like I said, if need be, I'll fly out there. I'll, I will do personal um, um, a few days or three days or four days of teaching, training, and just loving on you, uh, my wife and I, and just been ministering to you and let you see. Because the end time, the, the coming of the Lord is coming so quickly. You want to be ready. And then if you, you, you want to gather your family and your friends Together, we'll fly out there, we'll drive there or wherever it's at, and we'll sit in your home or sit wherever you'd want to, to sit at. If it's at a, um, a steakhouse or if it's at a, uh, a civic center in a, in a city or whatever it is, we'd be happy to bring to you the joy of the Lord in the salvation of Jesus Christ. We love you. Um, God loves you. And we want you to be saved. I want to go to heaven with you. I don't want you to spend eternity in hell. I want you to spend eternity in heaven. Again, if you don't have your own Bible, and if you can't afford a Bible, or if you want a Bible that I'm able to provide for you, we have the Word of Flame Bible, Holy Bible, King James Version, that has um, a lot of good Bible studies. Some of the things I've even talked about this time about baptism in Jesus' name and filling the Holy Ghost, about healing, about um, holiness, about um, living a uh, righteous life. There's a lot of great studies in that Bible, and it's a very inexpensive Bible. And if you're not able to afford it, it's at uh, Pentecostal Publishing House. Uh, if you're not able to afford it, we'll mail you one. We'll send it to you. Or if you want us to come, we'll bring several Bibles for your, your people. And if you uh, are able to afford one, it's about $100. This one right here um, is a very good study Bible also. Um, but again, there's the one that um, I was just telling you about. It's I think it's under $15. And then there's another one called Exploring God's Words or Search for Truth, the Holy Bible. And the same Pentecostal publisher. And it has studies in it. It's a little bit more expensive looking, a little bit better leather to it. And that's probably um, under $30. But again, $100, $30, or under $15. And we're, we're willing to uh, purchase uh, the $15 ones or even the, the $30 ones if, if need be. 
But if you're wanting to understand more about this, don't just believe me, but take the scriptures, take what's been given to you and study it out for yourself. I promise you everything that we're teaching it's not what I'm grabbing, just one thing here and wanting to believe this, but it is in accordance from Genesis to Revelation and it ties together. Not too long ago, and if you've just started to watch it, that we did a uh, study called um, Exploring the Word of God Together. And it's on Facebook, all of the lessons. I can't remember for sure how many are, are on there. It's from um, 10 to 15 lessons, but it's very um, easy to find. Um, you might have to dig through a lot of different messages. And then it's also on TRC Family. It might be, even be easier on the YouTube because it's a little bit organized, more organized, and it's less, uh, a lot of stuff in between of church announcements and things like that than it was on Facebook. But if you're interested in that, go to those, go through those studies, and you'll find out everything that we teach and we preach and everything that we instruct is according to the Word of God. I've taken a lot of time at the last moment to really explain um, the biblical uh, principle and be, the principle uh, thought of us um, ministering to you. Um, I do have an education, but to be honest with you, education does not give you revelation. A relationship with Jesus Christ gives you revelation. And this is what you and I both desire to have. I desire more revelation and understanding from God, not change his doctrine, not his teachings, but more of an understanding revelation of what those teachings actually mean. Amen? Amen. And I see, wow, for this time of day, several people have been on here. And I know a lot of people that um, usually are part of this that are working. Um, I know you'll, when you get off, this will be ready for you. This You're probably going to think, wow, two days in a row that he's done this. Um, I'm going to try to be very sensitive to God during these times and, and bring before you. It might not be Psalms 9-1. It might be another thought that God has given me in the morning or during some other time. But please let God, let God, let God, not man, not man, not an organization, not a church, but let God speak to you through this in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord. For this morning that you spent with me in uh, fellowship, I thank you, Lord God, for giving me an understanding of your word. I pray for the revelation of your spirit to flow freely. If you've done it for me, you'll do it for others. You're not a respecter of persons. So, Lord God, I pray that you, the hungry, the thirsty, will hear. Let them add ears to hear. Let them hear in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the Holy Spirit of God will flow freely. I pray, Lord, that people that need to be healed in their bodies, make yourself real to them, heal them. Those don't heal their bodies, but heal their minds, their soul, their spirit, to bring salvation to them. Lord. The bottom line is we don't want to just be healed. We want to be saved also in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Love you. See you next time. I'm still on. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Pastor, for letting me know. I'm still trying to learn this laptop. I was trying to go on through here and um, respond to everybody. Um, oh, I forgot to end. Again, I apologize. God bless you.